So, welcome back to another Thursday on The Faith in Perspective. I'm your Thursday host, Yekka. And this week we're doing do-it-yourself tutorials for uh, Samhain or Beltane if you're in the Southern Hemisphere. Before getting into the actual um, DIYs, wanted to talk about a little bit about what this time of year is for us or, or for me. Um, and that is, you know, we usually actually call it third harvest. And in terms of what's happening in the ecosystem around us right now, um, the humans are doing lots of construction. <laughs> but the, the plants and the animals, many of them are either switching into their dormant state or dying and beginning for this period of winter. Because our fall, our autumn is very short. Somewhere about in the middle of September, it switches from summer to fall just very suddenly. All of a sudden, oh, it's fall now. And it'll go all the way until the end of October. But by Halloween, we almost always have snow. Um, today's the 15th, which is our official average last frost, or first frost, excuse me. Uh, we haven't gotten it yet, but we probably will quite soon. So what's going on in the world around is this, this preparing for the cold period, this period of death, this period of beginning decay, which I think is beautiful and sacred. Um, and so that's something that I like to celebrate and also just on a very practical level for preparing. Um, so we're going to go inside and this is going to be a little bit choppy because I'm going to do bits throughout the whole day for you all um, because some of this is going to take a little bit longer than just, um, you know, it's not quick. So let's go inside. So, I hope you can see my hands and they're in focus. This is a pumpkin, as you can tell. Um, it's one from the garden. And I want to use this one up right away. And the reason is, one, it doesn't have its stem. And then some little creatures tried to eat it, gave up, so it's a little bit damaged. So I want to use it right away. Whereas other ones, like this one, no damage, it has its stem. It's gonna last a good five or six months, so I can just have this one hanging out around the house as decoration. Whereas this one, I wanna use up right away because of the damage. Um, and I can look in, I mean, they didn't actually get to the flesh in here. Let's see, can you see that? I probably have to be back here. So, I'm gonna cut it open. I can find things to cut it open with. This is a nice soft one. Um, some rinds are a lot harder. Let's see, let me tilt this up just a little bit. There we go. Okay. So this is different than like the jack-o'-lantern pumpkins. This is a pie pumpkin. Um, so you can see it's got this thick flesh for eating where your pie ones are gonna have this really thin, hard flesh. So I want to save the seeds because this pumpkin did really well in the garden. So I'm going to keep it. So what I'm going to do is scoop that out. And let's see. I'm just going to scoop all the center out, all the seeds. If you can see that. which is kind of hard to do with the camera, facing the camera, so I trust that you guys will understand the process. With bigger ones, like the real big pumpkins, um, or ones that just have harder outsides, sometimes you have to hit pretty hard. Um, if it's a really big one, I'll actually just take it and throw it on the concrete or the ground. And there we go. So I've got the seeds 
and then the two halves of the pumpkin. I've got a baking dish right here. I'm going to set them with the cut side down and fill a little bit of water up to about here. Can you see that? Yeah, you can see that. Um, and then put it in the oven for 40 minutes or so at around 400 degrees. Um, and then we'll be back with it in. So here are the seeds cleaned off. This is about the extent to which I do it. Um, then I let them dry and store them in a paper bag until the spring. The reason that it needs to be paper and not a plastic bag is that these little guys actually are alive and still need to breathe. And depending on your climate, um, even here in such a dry climate, they tend to mold when you have them in the plastic. So it's good to go with paper. So I'll let these guys sit out for a couple days before putting them in a little envelope or something like that, a little brown paper bag. Uh, this is not all of them. This is only about half. I got bored <laughs> and impatient cleaning them off and threw the rest of the birds. Some people, instead of saving them to plant, like to eat them. Um, they roast them up with a little salt, pepper, uh, and then enjoy eating them as snacks. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to show you is actually hats. And this is a tradition that I guess going on three years now I make everyone hats because we're going into the winter and uh, it's gonna get cold. So I have a friend who is due this um, this winter so I'm making her a lot of little baby hats. Um, this one's a little apple and I'm pretty pleased with this so I think I'll make more. So I've got quite a few other little ones I'm making for her. Um, for all of my nieces and nephews, for our fall, here's a pumpkin one. Again, this is too small to fit an adult's head, but this fits a kid's head. And how I'm doing them is I'm doing them with the round knitting, which is super, super, super easy, and I love it. Like, I can do actual knitting. I've knit since a child. But this is just so relaxing, so simple. Um, it's just, you don't have to worry about how tight your stitches are, anything like that. So it's a really wonderful, um, to kind of zone out. We don't watch TV, but if I did watch TV, um, this would be something to do at the same time. But listening to audiobooks, uh, my partner will be sitting playing video games in the evening and I'll just be knitting away. Something like this takes about 15 minutes. Um, a child size hat, which is what this one is. To make an adult hat, this would be the size of a loom that would be used. I'm missing a few pegs, so I just switch over. Um, really, really inexpensive. I think I got the set of these three plus a larger one, so four for um, not even 20 bucks, and I've used them over and over and over. Um, and you guys know I love... Um, I like to save money. A lot of reasons I do a lot of um, DIY is because we don't have a lot of money to buy lots of things. So we make a lot of things. So I can buy something, this is half gone, but five bucks for this and I can make four hats out of it. Versus trying to buy four hats, minimum they're going to be ten dollar hats. So saved a lot of money right there. Anyways, let me show you the stitches. I hope that this is in um, I really hope that you can see it from here, but it's super simple. I could actually start a new one. Let me start one here so you can see how simple it is. So, all you're doing is you're going to loop around each of these little pegs. I keep trying to move it closer, that's not going to help. So I loop around like this. And this is the start of my first stitch. I don't know if you'd really count it as a stitch when it's a loom, but um, and what I'm doing is I'm pulling them down to the bottom because I'm going to go around twice. Okay, I'm back to the start, so I'm going to do a second row here at the top. 
And the more time you spend doing this, the faster you get, of course. So I'm going to go all the way around. Cat really enjoys this. Sometimes he takes the ball of yarn and just runs with it while it's attached. So I've gotten all the way around. I'm going to tuck my extra yarn here and then take this little needle. You take the bottom loop and you take it and you go up and over this little knob and then you push it down. You take the next one up, over, push it down. Up, over, push it down. And you just go all the way around like this. Okay. And then once I reach the beginning, then I'll put another row of loops and repeat. And you'll just keep doing that until you get the length of the hat that you want. And then you tie it off. There are all kinds of other stitches you can do with um, circle knitting or loom knitting. Personally, I think this one's fine and most of the time I do just this one. Okay, see, so I get to the end. I take my thread, which is attached to the ball, or my yarn, excuse me, go back around. So now I'm gonna be doing my second row. So I did one row of stitches. This will be the second. Okay, so I have them cooked. You can see they're nice and soft. There's a little extra water in them. I rinse them off um, to make them cool down faster. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to scoop out the insides, which are wonderful and soft. And fill my little jars. You could also do this with plastic, like a plastic bag or something. You'd want it to be a little cooler. I love these guys. They're little um, half pints. So they're eight ounces, like a cup. And I use them for everything. I can get them locally for nine bucks for a dozen. So we make the cat's food and we put it in here. Um, I make our own like nut butters, things like that. Put them in there. Uh, things like this. Freeze it. I even pack lunches in here because they're really nice and you can you know, you gotta squish the stuff in there. Uh, but I usually am eating pretty nutrient dense food so I don't need large quantities of it. Um, and then just like slip it in my bag or winter pocket, you know, the big coat pockets. So I'm gonna fill these guys up and I'm gonna leave a little bit of extra room at the top because I will be freezing most of these because this is more food. You know, we don't eat that much of it at once. And most recipes, this is a cup, right? So most recipes aren't calling for more than a cup. There we go. I'm gonna let them cool a little bit more before putting the lids on. And be right back. Okay. So I don't actually usually bake with recipes which means that most of the time it comes out great and every now and then it comes out terrible. But, let's see. I know you're supposed to start with all the dry ingredients first or something like that, but meh. So, some coconut flour. Some cocoa flour, looks pretty good, probably eh, a large egg, these ones are from our neighbors, um, so I've got selections of sizes in here. something to make it a little bit poofy.
cream. And mix it up. Mm. Doesn't feel wet enough, so more cream. So now here's what this is, the whole making the pumpkin thing. I'm just going to scoop some in. Now you could just use a, you know, the canned pumpkin, uh, it could be butternut, um, any sort of winter squash, as long as it's a winter squash, it'll be fine. A little bit of stevia. A lot of cinnamon. A little nutmeg. Mmm, a lot of clove, and some cardamom. I think I'm actually going to put a little bit of almond, too. So I just got this recently and have been loving it. This is a little silicone mold, um, which is awesome. You can pop your little mini donuts out of it very easily. Um, it, the instructions, you know, most people say that they can get away without putting any sort of oil on here. I do not find that with the baking that I do because I use uh, coconut and nut flours and find that, you know, they just don't release the same way as if I was using um, a grain. So I'm going to go ahead and butter this up and now I'm just going to scoop this in. Because I'm not super picky about the strings, it's a little bit stringy. There we go. So, I'm gonna put the oven back on somewhere in the 300 to 400 range. And pop it back in. This is just a thing of cream. This is another half pint, but it's the narrow mouth instead of the wide. And it's one of these life hacks that you've probably seen all over the place, uh, but it actually really works. So I'm just going to shake it and I find that these, this shape works a little bit better than the shape. And I'll be right back when it's done. So you know it's done because all of a sudden it's not liquid anymore, it's just almost instantly. There you go, cream. Well, whipped cream. They turned out very cute. And There we go. Hmm, very good.